the most perfect vegan tiramisu. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Britt and I am the creator of The Banana Diaries, a vegan food vlog where you can find all these amazing vegan desserts and meals for you to make for you and your family and show them how amazing plant-based cooking is. Today we are making the most incredible vegan tiramisu. I actually based this off of my great grandpa's recipe and then I realized how much tiramisu is not vegan. So we had to kind of like just wing it and I deliver to you the most amazing tiramisu that is vegan and dairy-free and eggless that you wouldn't know is vegan and dairy-free and eggless. That was approved by my 82-year-old Italian grandmother whose father originally created this recipe. So I consider that a feat and I just know that you're gonna really dig this recipe. So we're gonna walk through how to make the from scratch homemade lady fingers, which are easier than it seems. Then we're gonna make the homemade vegan mascarpone cream and then we're gonna to top with our homemade two ingredient vegan whipped cream. So simple, you're gonna love it, let's begin. We are gonna start with making our vegan lady fingers. These are so simple and easy, don't worry. If you've never made lady fingers before, it's gonna go just great. We start with 120 milliliters or half a cup of aquafaba, and this is also your chickpea brine. So this is just the liquid from your can of chickpeas, we're gonna add it right in there. No need to reduce it or anything, Just as it is, totally fine. And then we're gonna add in a teaspoon of cream of tartar. This is also vegan despite its name. Um, cream of tartar is actually just the residue that comes from the winemaking process, which is kind of cool. And this helps to stabilize our vegan meringue that essentially we're making a vegan meringue first and then we're going to add in our flour ingredients and it becomes lady fingers because like original lady fingers, we use egg whites and we kind of make it into a meringue and pipe it. So we're kind of following the same traditional way of making lady fingers, which is really cool. Just all vegan and dairy free. Okay, so we have our cream of tartar in there with our aquafaba, and now we're going to start our stand mixer. I recommend using a stand mixer over a hand mixer just because it's going to take a lot of time. If you're gonna use a hand mixer, aquafaba doesn't whip into stiff peaks as well as egg whites. It takes more time. So I highly recommend using a stand mixer. We're gonna just start it. As this is mixing, we're going to add in tablespoon by tablespoon of our sugar. We're gonna add in three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. And make sure that your sugar is vegan. I use a high quality vegan sugar, Florida Crystals. So as you can see, it's starting to get nice and foamy right now. That's great. We're gonna increase the speed a little bit. Get it going even more. Now it's gonna to start to foam like egg whites, which is really cool. And now we're gonna add in our sugar, tablespoon by tablespoon, making sure not to overwhelm our mixture, just like what you would do with a meringue. I like to think of this as like you take a breath after every tablespoon. It just kind of makes sure that you're not adding in too much all at once. This is a process. We're like getting into the flow with our meringue, our vegan meringue. You can see it's gonna start to like really get nice and glossy too. It's, it looks just like meringue. You can take a sip of coffee. <laughs> it's really getting nice and thick. This is awesome. I'm gonna just add the rest of it in there. Perfect. So I'm gonna just pause right now and show you quickly what kind of not stiff peaks looks like. So this is gonna, not a stiff peak. This is like a semi peak, okay? We want stiff peaks. So I'm gonna continue mixing. You're gonna need probably about another eight minutes at this. See, it's like very gloopy. It's going to stiffen just like a regular meringue, but we gotta give it some time. And that is perfect. We have some stiff peaks. Now it's time to add in our other ingredients. First up, we have two tablespoons of a neutral oil or melted vegan butter. Just make sure that the vegan butter is not too hot. You can use avocado oil as well, sunflower oil, or your vegan butter. So just gonna add that in there. And then we have 50 grams, which is about like a quarter of a cup of dairy-free yogurt. I like to use um, Forager Project yogurt. I really, really like it. I just use their unsweetened plain. So we're going to add that in there. 
And adding in these wet ingredients will deflate our meringue just a little bit. It's totally fine. We just wanted to get like a lot, a lot of volume at first. And then, um, oh, my cat is doing something. Oh, typing an email, great. <laughs> Cosmo, <laughs> naughty. And then we're gonna add in some vanilla extract. I'm doing a tablespoon because I really, really like to have a strong flavor in there. And there we go. All right, and now we're going to mix just until all of our wet ingredients are incorporated, and then we're going to put our sand mixer away and fold in the dry ingredients. So, let us go. And that is perfect. That last part is just so quick and easy. And it's gonna look a little gloopy, like you think that you lose all your stiff peak that you just worked so hard for. I'm not making any sense, but you know, you, you lose a little bit of the meringue fluff, but that's really fine because the volume is still there. Now we're going to transition our stand mixer away. Now we don't need him anymore. So, stand mix is away. Now we're going to sift our dry ingredients in two batches into our liquid mixture here. So I'm gonna add in about half of the flour. We're using 250 grams or two cups in total, but I'm first just gonna add in about half of that. And then I am gonna add in two tablespoons of cornstarch. And then two teaspoons of baking powder with a little bit of sea salt. All right, now we're just going to sift that in there because we, we don't want any clumps of flour so that we're not over mixing our batter here. Fantastic, okay, set that aside. Oh, there's the sea salt. <laughs> and now for this, it's a really, really specific technique. It's kind of like making macarons, if you've ever made macarons before. But we're going to fold the flour into our mixture in sort of like a J formation. So instead of mixing, we're going to like kind of scoop under, lift, and fold. So that's gonna help us prevent overmixing of our batter because we don't want the gluten to form. By the way, you can also use gluten-free flour, the King Arthur Measure for Measure Gluten-Free Flour is my favorite go-to gluten-free flour blend. That's what I've tested these with and they work great. So basically you're just going to lift under and fold down in kind of a J formation. So let's see if we can get that on the camera. Yeah, that's great. So lift under, fold. Once the dry ingredients look like they've started to really incorporate, then we're gonna add in the remainder of our flour. All right, so that's perfect right here. We'll stop. Now, put your sifter back on, your sieve, and we're gonna add in the remainder of our flour. Move our little silicone spatula out of the way and sift that in. See, it's really not as scary as you think to make your own lady fingers, right? It's like not that scary of a process. You can do it. We have to show the world that vegan baking is just as delicious as regular baking. And I know that our animal friends are gonna appreciate it, so. <laughs> All right, now let's fold the remainder of our dry ingredients in. It's going to be a very thick batter. So don't freak out, just trust the process. That's why we're making a video, so I can show you that you, don't, you can trust the process here. <laughs> have a little faith. But these are gonna taste so good. I'm so excited. Like you could honestly just make these and enjoy them with a cup of coffee. There's so many different applications for lady fingers that I love. You can use them as a border around like a Chantilly cake, a vegan Chantilly cake that is. This is perfect actually. Wow, all right. Just a few more scrapes there. Make sure all that is in. And you can tell that our baking powder is already starting to activate. Yay, okay. That is what the batter should look like. It's thick, it's gonna be pipeable. It's definitely, yeah, this is just, this is great. I'm really excited for you guys. Let's get to piping this now. So now we're gonna fill our piping bag and let's make our lady fingers. So now we have two baking sheets lined with parchment paper and we have our piping bag. I put it in a large jar because that's just easier to fill our piping bag. It's such a thick batter. So we'll just scoop our batter in here as much as we can get in. And the best part is you don't even need a piping tip. We're just gonna snip the end of our piping bag and then we'll pipe our lady fingers. All right, that, oh, <laughs> we can get it out. Okay, there we go. All right, that is perfect. 
I try to do about like an inch wide, maybe a little bit less. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'll snip like right there. That looks great. All right, so we're just going to pipe like a four inch lady finger right here. And then you kind of just pull up and that's the lady finger. And I spread them out a little bit. They're not gonna stick together or anything, but try to get them as even as possible. So I'm not applying a lot of pressure when I'm piping it. I try to do eight in a row. So we're trying for like, you know, 28 lady fingers, and that should be enough for an eight by eight tiramisu. And you don't need any mold, which I love about these. Like they're just like regular lady fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I spread them out a little bit too much. We weren't gonna get exactly eight on the first row, but that's okay. We'll squeeze them in somewhere else. The second row is definitely easier because you already have like the other lady fingers weighing it down. <laughs> and it's okay if your lady fingers are also kind of, like you see the little aeration in it, they're still gonna bake wonderfully. And now we're just going to lightly dust our lady fingers with a little bit of powdered sugar for them to bake in. And this will just kind of create like a nice, like kind of a crunchy hard top on our lady fingers. And I say you can use like a third a cup. Um, but yeah, it doesn't have to be precise. You're just trying to like coat them in powdered sugar because that's what the classic look looks like. And it serves a purpose. It gives them that crunchy, nice outer shell. Okay, that is perfect. All right, now it is time to bake. So our oven is preheated to 375 degrees and we're gonna bake these for about 12 to 15 minutes. You can bake them a little bit longer if you want them even crunchier, just depends. Um, just make sure that you're taking them out around when they look golden brown. So let's get these into the oven. All right, next up we have our homemade vegan mascarpone cream. And we're using our homemade three ingredient vegan mascarpone. I do have a video tutorial of this. I'm gonna pop it up right there. You can check it out on my Instagram at the underscore banana diaries. So for the mascarpone cream, it's gonna be a little bit different than your traditional mascarpone. We have the homemade vegan mascarpone. We're also gonna be using vegan butter instead and we're using powdered sugar, just a cup of powdered sugar. It's just to help integrate into our vegan butter a little bit easier than granulated sugar. And then we'll add in our mascarpone and then vanilla extract. So we'll start by adding our vegan butter to our bowls. And then the powdered sugar as well. And the clumps should actually work out as we're going to mix this all together. So you'll see, we kind of want it to be almost like a frosting, but not quite. It's not gonna taste overly sweet because we're gonna add in a lot of mascarpone afterwards. So don't worry about that. Okay, perfect. Just gonna scrape that down. And now we're gonna add in a tablespoon of vanilla extract. Tablespoon, oh, seems like a lot, but it's worth it. It tastes so good. And you can also add in alcohol here. I choose not to, cause I don't know. I don't really like my tiramisu with alcohol. So I just like it to be super coffee and vanilla-y and cocoa-y, so that's what I do. And now we have our homemade mascarpone. Check that out. That is mascarpone and it's all vegan. So, so in love with this, it's so cool. Oh, I forgot to mention, it's not made with cashews either, and it's not made with tofu. It's made with soy milk, but you don't have to use a block of tofu, because I know that everyone seems to freak out over the whole tofu thing for some reason. But yeah, it's just soy milk, vinegar or lemon juice, and vegan heavy cream or coconut cream. You just go check out the process, it's in my uh, blog post. Then we're just gonna scoop two cups of this mascarpone cream in here. And we're gonna mix. Oh my goodness, this is so lovely. 
We're gonna grab all the rest of our ingredients and we're going to assemble our tiramisu now. Then we're gonna chill it for four hours and then we'll finish off with the whipped cream. So, be right back. Let me just make some magic here. <laughs> all right, team, let's make this magic happen. So we have our lady fingers here already and then we have our mascarpone and then I just brewed um, a very strong cup of coffee. Typically use espresso, I'm all out of espresso. So we're using coffee, it's fine though. And this is a fresh cup. Don't worry for anyone panicking that I was sipping the coffee that we're gonna use. This is a fresh cup. So what we do is we basically, we're gonna make two layers of the tiramisu. We're gonna start by soaking our lady fingers, one lady finger at a time in the coffee, layer it here. Then we're gonna add half the mascarpone to the lady fingers and repeat the process with the second layer of tiramisu. Or, lady fingers. So let's get going. So we're gonna take one, gonna dip it in the coffee, and then we're going to place it right there. Super simple. So we're just gonna continue doing that. This is an eight by eight pan. I fit about four across. I like to make sure they're super soaked too, because I really, really love that. All right, so now we're gonna add on about half of our mascarpone. You can see it's super creamy and lush. And then just spread it around so that it covers your lady fingers. Perfect, and now we're gonna just repeat the process with our remaining lady fingers. All right, perfect. Add on the remainder of our mascarpone. Oh, hello, Nala. I'm gonna grab a silicone spatula in just a sec because you really don't wanna waste any of the mascarpone cream. Making sure we are not wasting a drop of that mascarpone. I know I don't pronounce it correctly. Just, I don't pronounce a lot of things correctly, so. I don't know why, what my issue is. Like I say like treadmill instead of treadmill, but it's just, it's, I don't know. That's just how I say things. Biggest argument that Jared and I have is my pronunciation of the word frequent. If you are frequenting the grocery store, that is how you say it. You don't say you frequent the grocery store. I mean, I think both are <laughs> acceptable terms. I don't think that how I say it is strange. I'm not gonna give you that one. <laughs> Our tiramisu is all covered. It looks fabulous. We are recording a video, friends. Okay, so now that our tiramisu is all assembled, we're going to chill this for about four hours in the fridge. I like to put just a piece of plastic wrap over it because that just keeps it safe. I know I have a lot of issues with like the single plastic use too. I really try not to use it and most of the time, like for my pie doughs, I'm using um, parchment paper instead to wrap them in because it's at least you can recycle that. Just gonna place a piece of plastic wrap over there. All right, and now we're gonna chill it and I will see you guys in four hours for me, but literally in two seconds for you. So, bye. <laughs> All right, team, so our tiramisu is now ready to top with a whipped cream, so we're gonna make that really quickly. You just need vegan heavy cream. You can also use vegan coconut cream, but make sure that it is a chilled can and that you're scooping out the fat that is separated from the water of the heavy coconut cream. Otherwise, I just like to buy this because it honestly just acts like a, a heavy cream, like a regular dairy heavy cream. So I'm using Country Crock. I've also used Califia, Califia, and Silk. All of those are great. Again, I think that it's easier to use a stand mixer and we're gonna add our whisk attachment once more. Adding our vegan heavy cream, two cups of this, so basically the entire container to our stand mixer bowl. And now we're gonna mix this on high speed and as we mix, we're gonna add in about three tablespoons of sugar just to lightly sweeten it. This is awesome. 
And that is our whipped cream. How easy was that? That was ready in five minutes. You guys are just gonna love it and it tastes just like whipped cream. So now let's get our tiramisu out and we're gonna pipe this whipped cream on top. You can also just smooth it on top. I like the pipe look. I think it's like fun and then we dust some cocoa. So let's get to that. And our tiramisu is ready. The mascarpone has perfectly set on top and now we are ready to pipe. Just like before with our lady fingers, we're going to fill our piping bag. I like to use the jar because it's just easier. And again, I don't really think that you need a piping tip because we're. I just want like the classic round look for the whipped cream being piped on, like little dots being piped. It's kind of cool. It's a very, very thick vegan whipped cream. You really kind of have to shove it down. I switched to these tinier piping bags and I'm not really a fan, but this is all that my grocery store had, so. We're rolling with it. But normally I like to buy like the extra large piping bags because I don't like to refill piping bags as you go along. I find that just really annoying. See, this is the issue is that it gets really messy. And you also don't really want to have your hand on the whipped cream because then it's gonna, you know, start to melt it, right? For the classic tiramisu look, but you pipe like a really big dot, or at least that's what I do. And this is all gonna get covered in cocoa. So if like you make a mistake, it's totally cool. <laughs> that was funny guys. And then just to like help me myself, I like to pipe it this way as well first. So I know, okay, I can like keep in line and it'll look pretty. But yeah, this is just the easy part, you know? Just pipe, have fun. Our tiramisu is looking good, guys. All right, and now we're gonna finish with our cocoa powder. You wanna really like be generous on this because the cocoa with the coffee is absolutely delicious. And then, does anyone remember the Michael Scott scene where he's eating tiramisu and then he chokes on it, talking to David? It's like I just choked on the cocoa powder. Anyways, it's funnier in the scene. <laughs> this is our perfect vegan tiramisu that absolutely no one is gonna know is vegan. It's perfect, let's slice into this. have it, the most perfect vegan tiramisu. We have the layers of ladyfingers soaked in espresso with the vegan mascarpone and the whipped cream, and it's absolutely delicious. You're gonna love it. So you can find the full recipe linked down below, first link that's right there, and be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to be notified when more recipe videos like this pop up. And be sure to go check out the Banana Diaries at the underscore Banana Diaries on Instagram and TikTok. I know that you're just gonna love this recipe and I can't wait to hear what you think. Enjoy, I'll see you on the next one.